Hello everybody, thanks for coming out. Uh, my name is Jay Wallace. I'm the regional sales manager for Clearcom. We're based in Alameda, California. Our manufacturing is all done in Southern California. Uh, I was born a Texan, but I'm a Californian by choice. I've been out here for nine years and I get the privilege of living in the Bay Area and calling on clients here and in Portland and Seattle and Chicago and Toronto, so I've got a pretty nice territory. Um, Muslin was kind enough to invite me over to run through kind of the state of wireless intercom um, today and bring out a couple of products to show you so you can see kind of some differences between apples and oranges and talk about what some of our options are. And then I did bring some, um, some IP products as well if someone's interested in that after we can talk about it. Uh, so briefly, wireless intercom has been around for 30 plus years. Uh, a few years ago, the FCC decided to monetize 700 megahertz, so they had an auction, and many of us that owned and operated wireless microphones and some wireless intercom were kind of caught off guard in that all of a sudden what we owned, used, and had been working well for a long, long time became illegal. Um, so that was, that was kind of the first time the FCC has ever reallocated spectrum and made the original legacy users law violators. So that kind of changed the way things worked. Um, we recently went through an auction for 600 megahertz. Some of you are probably aware of that. Uh, that auction did close and we have a little less than three years to vacate everything that's on 600 with the exception of a tiny sliver that's still open for some transient wireless microphone stuff. So we at Clearcom realized that there was going to be a crunch for spectrum and the wireless microphone people have less mobility than we do uh, based on technology. So the vast majority of the products that we currently offer for sale avoid UHF altogether. Uh, in the case of the systems I brought with me, the uh, DX line is in 2.4 gigahertz. Um, it shares the Wi-Fi band, but it's a, it's a technology that plays well with it. We can talk about that in greater depth. And then this system, FreeSpeak 2, operates in the 1.9 gigahertz DECT range. So what that means is I don't have to worry about the FCC auctioning off the spectrum. This one is legal all over the world. It's not going anywhere. This one operates in a tiny sliver of a guard band that keeps AT&T and Verizon from interfering with one another. So it's got to be there. And it's only this wide, so the FCC has no value. It has no value to them anyway. Um, but from a technology point of view, that guard band's got to be there, and that's what we occupy. Uh, 1.9 is legal anywhere in North America, and there are some other countries around the world where it's legal. If it's going to travel, I probably wouldn't get a 1.9 system. I have this available in 2.4 as well, and it's, a, it's legal worldwide. Um, but if it's, if it's for the Bay Area or anywhere, Canada, Mexico, it's legal, and that's the one I would probably lead with. Um, the questions that I typically ask uh, prospective clients when they call and are interested in specifying a wireless intercom system is how many users, how many of those users need to be able to talk at will. In other words, I want to be able to press my button and be heard all the time or be latched on. And what kind of coverage area am I looking at? Are we talking about one space? Are we talking about two spaces but not separated by concrete? Are we talking about green rooms that are upstairs? Are we talking about a loading dock area we need to cover? And based on your answers to that, I would generally kind of guide you through the litany of wireless that we currently sell. Um, I'll start off just talking briefly about DX. DX has been around for a long time, and, and some of you probably have either used a DX200 uh, in the past or owned DX200. Um, we've taken some steps to make that product more user-friendly in the uh, form of a DX210. And now we have a new one called a DX410 that's, uh, that's been out for a few months. But it still maintains its simplicity and its durability. So these systems run off of a lithium battery that will operate the pack for about 19 hours. So you turn them on, you plug them in, and forget about them. Uh, essentially, you've got a volume control, a power button, and a talk button, either latched or push to talk. And what makes this one so good for a number of our clients is the ability to take punishment. These things can be abused. Do not try that with an RS600 belt pack. You can try it with these. So is the light still on? Yes, it is. It survived again. Uh, the headsets or you guys, guys want to look are, right. yeah, are ultra lightweight. They can take punishment. The cable is very much like a Sennheiser MKE-2 cable. It's got a steel reinforcement strand in it. It's not going to break. 
And even though it's a closed ear headset, it is very lightweight. It's got an electric mic element in it. It sounds good. <clears throat> so these things will take punishment. Uh, audio quality is excellent. Latency on it's low. It'll interface with our wired intercom system uh, a lot better than the earlier 200 would. It's got an automatic nulling circuit in. So you, you essentially plug the two systems in together. You hit a null button and 15 seconds later it balances the system to where there's no echo or noise on the line anymore. This system will support 15 belt packs, four of which in single channel party line mode can talk simultaneously. The others are going to wait for an open talk path. So if one stage manager is all that needs the privilege of being able to latch on, then you can pair 14 other packs with it, it's great. If you've got eight people that need to talk all the time, it's going to take two of these base stations to make that happen. Or we move into FreeSpeak 2. The FreeSpeak 2 base, we brought that one out to uh, replace a lot of the legacy telex stuff that's in the marketplace. So we wanted some similar feature sets, but we wanted to improve on it, and I think we've done a nice job with it. So this base station will support 25 full duplex belt packs. That's the equivalent of five BTR-800 bases. So at that point, it becomes a value proposition. Uh, the belt packs themselves, no antennas anymore to get lost or broken, no battery sled to get broken, no belt clip issues. Um, this particular pack is weather resistant, dust proof, loud enough for rock and roll. <laughs> Okay, uh, so we wanted to give excellent audio quality, which some of the digital systems don't have, quite frankly. Uh, for a while, we marketed a product called Tempest, and Tempest filled a void for us, but Tempest had a couple of issues, especially for theater people. Uh, its latency was 85 milliseconds, so if we're all sitting around a tech table, wearing Tempest belt packs would drive each other nuts with the echo. Audio quality was 3.5 kilohertz. So if you're used to listening to a Telex BTR-800 or a HME Pro 850 and that nice smooth audio sound, you weren't getting that with Tempest. You were getting a functional communications device, but it didn't have the audio quality that we wanted. And finally, as we learned the hard way over at Berkeley Rep, you can't whisper into a Tempest bell pack. It has a noise gate built in. Bad. Really good for college football, very bad for theater. So we fixed all of that in FreeSpeak 2. So FreeSpeak 2 has latency of about 32 milliseconds. And we can put on some headsets and play with them and you'll see it's, it's not an issue. Audio quality is seven kilohertz, so it sounds like a wired belt pack. Uh, and you can't whisper into it. Like the DX, the batteries in these will run for 18 hours. Or three AA's will run it for four. We have a drop-in charger, so when the show's over, you unplug the headset, just drop in the charger overnight. The batteries, if you want to put spares, will slide into their own slots. The thing is durable. I'm not going to take this $2,000 belt pack and throw it on the floor, but it will take some abuse. Um, they wake up out of the box as a two-channel belt pack, so A and B and then C and D are call buttons. But the really cool thing about these, we can program those buttons to be other things. So if for a particular production, I need a lighting, an audio, a video and a tech channel all in one belt pack, we can do that. And it's just a matter of going into the web browser and assigning it to those buttons. And basically you can name them and, and it's all on a per pack basis. So if for instance, I don't have any authority, I wouldn't necessarily have anything but a single A button with a press to talk and a volume control. Have a nice day for a utility person. But a stage manager or a producer that needs extra control, we can do it. The base station supports four channels of ClearCom 2-wire or RTS 2-wire and four channels of 4-wire audio that can feed a matrix or can feed a wire, another wireless system or it could feed an, uh, an audio console. It's basically balanced line level audio. So what this enables us to do now is going to a venue and say ClearCom is the house and the TV truck is RTS. I can bring both systems in and put it all on a single belt pack. So someone that's coordinating it can have access to all the channels. Call buttons are available on this, programmable, either a beep in the ear, a vibration, both or none. Unlike the legacy UHF and VHF systems, when you go out of range, it's not going to throw noise on your entire system. When the receiver squelch opens up going, where's my bell pack? 
these mute. So it's very, very quiet. If you go out of range, you'll get a couple of quick beeps in your ear and your side tone goes away. So the, you don't hear yourself in the system anymore. And if you look down at your belt pack, it'll go searching. It'll, it's like, hello, I need my system. You don't have a lady that says, ow, oh. No. She lives in this box, but she does not live in this box. And there was some talk about putting her in this one, and we all went, no. Uh, she works down at our Poway, California office, and sadly, she didn't have a very good agent, so she gets no residuals for, for that. <laughs> it's unfortunate for her. She could have retired by now. Um, this is the antenna module and the radio deck. The space station doesn't care if it's a 1.9 or a 2.4. The radio is in here. Everything connects over cat cable now. No more coax, no more cable losses. And we can run up to 10 of these on this system. So we can create a very large roaming system with it. Uh, in a facility like this, I would think we'd want something here if this were a theater space. We'd probably want something in the, in the warehouse area if there were green rooms, a back loading dock. Uh, again, Berkeley Rep, that's, they're running three theater spaces with one base station now. And they can have simultaneous shows going on, no problem, because we've got enough channels to accommodate it. Each of these transceiver modules supports five belt packs. So that's how we kind of have to design the system. I would come in and say, all right, how many users do we have? Well, we have eight. Okay, no problem. Where are those eight people going to be during a day, during a show, during rehearsals? And so take a loading dock, for instance. All right, there's going to be one person back there supervising the unloading of, of, of the truck. Hmm, I see four ashtrays here. Is this also a, a smoking area? Well, yes, it is. Okay. So do you think there would be other technicians out here that would need to be on wireless packs while they're in their smoke breaks? Yeah, probably, okay. So we may need two antennas at least to cover the loading dock area. Maybe I don't need them physically in that area because I've got 800 feet line of sight with this. So I could have one on the side of a stage wall and that's probably gonna be enough coverage to get me out of that warehouse door over on the other side. That's, that's the goal. Um, so we kind of design a system based on where we want to cover and how many people at any one time, worst case, are going to be in that zone. Testing this system for coverage is really, really easy. Uh, I maintain a demo kit here in Alameda when it's not somewhere else. It's available to you to try. But we also built in a test mode in this unit. So I can literally send one of these, an AC power supply for it, two belt packs and headsets out in a small Pele case. You power this up by holding down its power button. It puts it in test mode, and two belt packs then can walk the area and test it for coverage. So you don't need an entire base station for that. Any of this equipment is available to try first before you buy it. I have competitors that will not let you do that. I am glad to let you do that. I want everybody happy. Uh, we've been in business for a long, long time, and um, the reason people keep coming back to us is because we build good stuff and we take care of people, and that's, that's, that's kind of what it's all about. A uh, couple of other features with this unit that ought to be mentioned, that's not just a wireless base station anymore. That's a four-channel wired main station as well, okay? So that can take the place of an MS-704 or an MS, whatever the old white face ones were that were four channels. I don't remember now, sorry. Uh, if you've got a brown one, like a particular school in San Francisco has, we can basically take the old unit out put that in the place of their wired station, and at that point, you've got the ability to plug our wired clear -com belt packs directly into that unit. Here it is. It'll power your wired system and give you wireless capability. How many belt packs are powered? With our modern ones, I've done as many as 20. If you need more than that, we would turn the internal 30-volt power off here, run a PS702 or 704, and go with your 50 packs at that point if you want to do it. So, yeah. We put features in it. Does it have a paging output? Yes. So you assign one of the buttons to be voice of God. I've got a balanced line level output that would go to your console, and you've got it. And again, I wouldn't have that privilege, but the stage manager would. And it's handy to be able to go, you know, 10 minutes to doors, or, you know, there's been, a, been an earthquake, let's evacuate calmly, or, you know, whatever. You can make announcements with it. Uh, you can page green rooms with it or, you know, name an application. There are also relay closures built in for that. So if we need to press a button and sign a relay to it, we can do that as well. Any questions at this point about wireless, where it's going, 
how it plays with other systems. You said the auction closed. Where did it close off at? What what range do you know? Uh, as far as frequencies, I have that. There's a group in the six. I want to say in the 610. So almost the entire mm -hmm. range. Almost the entire range of 600 is gone, or will be gone in two years, eight months, or something. Now, what will happen after everything becomes illegal? You may still be able to use your systems. Probably, in all likelihood, there will be high power Wi Fi devices occupying that spectrum. So you're going to be more likely to receive interference from them than you interfering. With the, with the owner of that spectrum. However, uh, I do know Verizon and T-Mobile are pretty aggressive about going out where they think they have issues and finding you and coming and knocking on your door and saying you need to cease and desist. Uh, Verizon will typically give you a warning before they call the FCC. Uh, the FCC is very much understaffed now and with the new administration I expect that will continue. Um, and what that means is the FCC isn't going to come and snoop but they're going to take Verizon on their word that this theater or this church or this broadcaster is illegally using our spectrum and they're going to go and they're going to write a, they're going to write a ticket for it and it's not inexpensive. Uh, the last I found, first violation, $10,000. Okay, well you just bought one of these and you're well on your way to buying one of those. The fact that we live in the Bay Area and we have an FCC office in San Francisco still would concern me to some degree. If you've got a call lettered broadcaster with a license involved, you absolutely cannot take a risk. Uh, theaters and some of the other uh, clients that we have, it's not quite as risky. So let's put some on and play with them. Well, you had a question. I, uh, oh, you got a question. Good. Yeah. When using multiple antennas with the, the uh, free speak, uh -huh. does there need to be a physical connection or can they jump wirelessly from one to another? They basically the antennas and the cat cable have to come back to the base station. But as far as creating a roaming system with overlapping coverage, absolutely it's, and it's seamless. That's a star configuration or can it be daisy chained through the antennas? You can't daisy chain them today. There there is a request by some of us on the sales team to allow that to happen just to simplify some of the installations. So at this point, the base supports two of these natively and provides PoE for a pair of them. So that's a starting point. If you need additional ones, <clears throat> we have a one by five splitter that you can duplicate. So two of those, and that's how we get to 10. So we can go 600 feet out to that uh, splitter PoE. And then I like to locally inject power there, and then we can go another six or so hundred feet out. I can also do fiber connection between the base station and the splitters. So if we need to go a mile, two miles, three miles, and then run cat cable out to antennas, we can do that. Uh, kind of handy in some sports configurations where I've got a central control room and a football stadium and a baseball stadium and something else to be able to spread them out and run them by fiber. None of the old uh, HME stuff or ClearCom stuff runs, operates in the 600 band anyway, though, right? Well, HME, the Pro 800 and Pro 850 does. Um, WBSs, which are our, that was our version of Telex BTR. And of course, the Telex stuff. Uh, if you have any of the old Vega stuff still, hopefully you don't. But if you did, some of that's in 600. Ours, ours is the uh, DX200. DX200 is legal. 2.4, it's happy. Mm hmm. Yep. And by the way, the way that works, it's not 802.11b Wi Fi, it's a spread spectrum frequency hopping radio. So it stays on a Wi Fi channel for five milliseconds before it skips away to another area so it's never on a Wi-Fi channel long enough for it to matter. Uh, Wi-Fi is in our noise floor and we're very tall in amplitude so we don't care if it's there either. So we can actually play well with it. The new radios, the 410s and the 2.4 version of this uh, is using a European standard where we're looking before we leap. So we're going to go out and if we see a lot of activity on Wi-Fi channel 11 we're going to avoid that one until that activity goes down or goes away. So it's, you're not instantly colliding. You're, it's kind of a smart Look first system. Have any trouble with any of the uh, wireless DMX devices? Nope. And if you want proof in that, join us at LDI, <laughs> where we are surrounded by more lights than audio stuff by far now. And uh, no, we can we can play with all of that. I haven't run into any issues there, and I've been in a couple of places where I thought I might. 
But LDI is a perfect example of what, if it was going to be bad, that would be where it would be. So I've set these belt packs up to be latching. So when it's orange, you're talking. So you can either hold it down, one, two, three, four, five, and release, or just one quick click and it's latched. Uh, volume controls are underneath, so you don't inadvertently bump them. Just, that's your volumes right there. So for our smaller, lower budget theaters that are running, you know, we have in old wired, you know, com, uh, wall boxes mm -hmm. and, and, and wire packs. Yep. Uh, we also, uh, you know, off of our base station, plugged into a, uh, uh, we have an output into our uh, intercom for dressing rooms. Right. And stuff. Uh, the stage manager sits at their desk and pushes the button and can talk back there too. Mm -hmm. uh, if we wanted to just add on the stage crew having wireless so that they're not tethered. How, uh, How many like users? Many, for just for wireless? Yeah. <clears throat> Maybe four. Okay. At the most? Yeah. So both of these systems will tie into your legacy system cleanly, simply. If you said that I only need one person, a stage manager, to be wireless on a wired system, I have a $29.95, $2,995 little black box and a single belt pack that you can basically plug into the headset jack on a wired intercom right. belt pack and make that headset wireless. Yes, no? Yeah, okay. Sorry. In looking at that and what you asked for, uh, I would take a quick look at the DX410 uh, four up system. Yeah. They, oh, yeah. they package a nice system that is exactly what you're asking. It just adds yeah. on that. Right. Right. Plug them in. I mean, out of that box, the only thing you need to add in is your two cables going into your wired system. Yeah. Thank you. Are the DX yeah. belt packs multi channel? Uh, they are two channel. However, comma, they're not, well, they are, but, but it depends on how you define two channels in your workflow. So, yes, it will be channel A or it will be channel B, but it's not dual listen. So if your show's getting called on A and you and I go over to B to have a private conversation, we're missing our cues. To me, that's not a two-channel belt pack. Now, if your workflow says, hey, I've just got two theater spaces and I want to use them separately and this is going to be on A and this is going to be on B, Okay, yeah, that's two channels. But workflow comes into it. I, right. And then the. There's also the ISO channel. So if you only want to talk to the stage crew that's wireless, if you press the ISO button, you're only talking to the wireless. Right. The wired guys never hear this. So that's a cool button in that uh, a director's call and show, and the techs can all have their own little private conversation, never be heard. The wheel just broke off of wagon two. What do we do? But can they hear the director's calls when they're in the ISO mode? Yes. Okay, so it's not like. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, but it, but if it's but if it's on B, you're not hearing A. Okay. I got to know. Two 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 two. Yeah, I may I may have the I may have the buzzer turned off as well. We can we can check that. Yeah 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 yeah. Mhm. Mm yes. So I can I can. I can hear, I can be on ISO and hear channel A. Okay. Yes. So the call buttons that you have programmed in here, you have them set to do just flashing lights? Let's look. Let's look. Oh, and this is the other cool thing about the system. So there's a GUI. There's a web browser-based GUI built in the unit. Everybody can guess so you can program the belt packs. For you. Yeah, sorry. So I've got a screen that basically gives me status of all my active packs. So I can name those. I've just got free speak bell pack one through five, but we can put somebody's name on it or a position, a roll number, roll name on it. Um, 18 hours, 16 hours, I can see the RF and I can see which antenna they're on. So if I had multiple antennas plugged in, we could watch them skip as they move through the facility. 
tell who's out smoking. So you know everything about the operators at this point. You can say, okay, they come back, they weren't answering your call. Well, I ran out of battery. No, you didn't. I was out of range. Uh, no, you weren't out of range. Uh, I didn't feel your buzz. Yeah, you did. You know, you were goofing off and you're in trouble now. So you can basically keep track of everybody on this. Uh, home. So this is the IP address for this base, or for this base. And it can either be a, a fixed IP address or it can be DHCP, depending on what your tech people want to do. Uh, you can pair the belt packs over the air. So when you buy a new system, you have to give this pack permission to talk to this base. And we do that for a couple of reasons. Number one, if we have another system in the area, we don't want them fighting. But secondly, we don't want someone stealing one of these or picking one up at a pawn shop and wreaking havoc on your intercom system. In some situations, that's, that's, a, that's a possibility. So it's a security thing. And it's got a code, and that's well, if how you kids figured out they could do that, it would be constant. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. terrible. Yeah. You're like, darn it. Yeah. Uh, this is the IP settings to put your address and static and so forth, gateway stuff. And then this is how we assign what channels go in and out of the base station. So again, I've got four two-wire ports, A, B, C, and D, and I've got four four-wires, program audio. And if we scan down here, we've got stage announce two, SA. Um, so if I have a two-wire port and it's ClearCom, you would change it to ClearCom here. So I was, I was in Salt Lake City at a jazz game and there are RTS in their house, so I connected via their RTS system. So you just put it in ClearCom. And then if you're going to plug belt packs directly into it, you would turn the power on. If it's part of an existing bigger system, you'd leave the power off. And this is how you can adjust the levels. So invariably, wired intercom is a lower level than any of these wireless systems. So to make everything even and not annoying to people, you can adjust the incoming wired level up and lower the wireless to make it match. And then this is how you do the individual belt pack assignments. So let's take this belt pack number one. Um, that's how I would take it from a latching button to a non-latching button. So at that point now, belt pack number one, if you press the button, it won't latch. And everything is is in real time over the air. Um, Someone's yeah. Someone's uh, Someone's yeah. Uh, wireless mic kill, no problem. So I can adjust individual levels. Uh, headsets adjustment, side tone, the amount of view you hear in your own headset. I want just enough of me to be confident I'm in the system. Because if you can hear yourself, you're connected to the base station. If it's too loud and you're using a lightweight headset, you're going to create potentially some feedback. That's a bad thing. But hey, if somebody's deaf and they want to be loud in their own head, they can do that. Can you adjust the side tone straight from the pack? You can. Yeah, there's menu settings. You can turn those menu settings off if you need to. There's always one. <clears throat> Mic echo cancellation disabled. Unless you're in a very loud concert environment or monster truck rally or something like that, I would just leave that off. In a normal uh, theater situation especially, uh, it's just extra processing power you're not using. But what that does is prevent this slapback loop of your mic being open. It's, it's, just, it's an extra level of DSP to help prevent some echo in a very loud environment. Does it have latency then? Uh, it doesn't add any noticeable latency. I haven't found it. it may, if it is, it's, it's, it's milliseconds difference. I just leave it off. Um, menu access. This is how you would give it permission to talk or to play with buttons or not. Right? And then alarm options. That's where the call signal comes in. Out of range. Low battery threshold, since this says 18 hours, I don't want to know at 25% with beeps in my head that my batteries are going to be bad in a day. You know, so I generally turn those off, honestly. But it's your call. It's your call. And then. So you put the call alarms on, so when someone hits the call button and you wanted it to beep or you wanted it to vibrate, that's where you. Yes. Adjust yep. Hank, ask a question. Sure. Do we have to own a PC in order to configure our wireless pack? You do not. 
um, as long as whatever device you're in is in your net connected to your network that this is plugged in, you punch in the IP address, it pops up, and away you go. It's a web browser. So you can operate this wirelessly then? <clears throat> yeah, this screen, absolutely. And it can be on an existing internet, right? It's not like a closed circuit nope. kind of thing. Nothing special, nothing closed. So iPad would work? Or tablet? Yep. Yes, it will. All of the above. The transceiver module, this allows for local power. So this can be a mile away on a piece of cat cable. I can get data for a mile, but I can't get power for a mile. So you can locally plug it in, and this can be a mile away. But that is not for updates? This is not for updates. This is for updates. And you can't power off of that? Correct. Either. Correct. And then that's your, that's your data connector. And again, individual four-channel base station. So you've got individual volume controls on the four channels. You've got talk buttons. You have listen buttons. Uh, it acts just like an MS-704 does. And do you have separate controls for interfacing with a wired system as far as incoming volume and outgoing volume? Yes. The one adjustment that we don't allow you to make on the wireless side is mic level. And a couple of reasons for that. Number one, people typically don't pay attention to what they're adjusting. And if it's wrong, it's bad. And they're upset with the system. So we give you very little limitation there, but we do allow you to adjust the output level of a particular pack going into the base station. So there are level adjustments, just not on the mic element itself. The other thing, if it's misadjusted, it really makes the, the codec work a lot, and it brings the quality of the system down. One of the things with digital. A couple of things you can't, when you run out of ones and zeros, it's a bad thing. So you've got that, and you've got latency. We've lowered the latency, and we've, I think, made a really nice audio package here. Oh, and the coolest thing of all, there's a flashlight in the bottom. <laughs> Kind of gimmicky, but you'd be surprised how many people love this. I already love it. Yeah. I'm sorry, I must have missed this, but um, the Cat5 cable does power that, but not a mile away, you said? Right. 600, okay. 600 I've, I've done 800 feet, and after that it gets flaky. And you do have uh, status lights on here that will give you, um, I think green is power and amber's data. So at a quick glance, either here or on the top, you can see that if I've got two solid lights, I'm good. Um, and you don't have to worry about things like concrete, what's the range? 800 feet. In an indoor environment, this frequency range and 2.4 reflect, and reflections are our friend with this. It's not like analog um, UHF wireless where reflections can nail you. Yes, there is multipath at 2.4 at and 1.9. It's different. So I have run into a couple of facilities where I had to play with antenna placement. Um, where I was just up in Salt Lake City where the Jazz play basketball. That is a tough RF arena. The geometry from their floor up to their dome ceiling is a problem. So I can cover all their concourses very nicely, but if someone's walking out to center court with a headset on to make a presentation, that's tough. Um, so we're, we're experimenting to see where to put antennas to make that work. But it's um, most everywhere else we've thrown this up, the coverage is phenomenal. I have a quick poll for all of you. I don't know if you're, any of you are familiar with the new CC110 headset. It's kind of in between uh, your CC26 and your CC300. Anybody have any opinions on this? Did you try it on? I haven't tried it on. Right. Right on. What's the difference? What's, what's the difference? Yeah. Uh, it, this one has an on and off switch, right? And this one does as well. Okay as well as a replaceable headset cable. It's slightly lighter. We, we stole it from buyer fair and square. So I have a show coming up with 200 high school students. OK. Is this going to survive? Yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of where I was going with it. Yeah. Is it's not as delicate as a CC26, but is yeah. it something with those, like, can people I, would be oh, interested in? Should okay. Musk yeah. start stocking these headsets? Because as of today, we don't. Yeah. Because I know that when I was in high school, those things. No, no, well, oh uh, yeah, there you go. I mean, there's there there are those of us who have scars from the blue ones. No, I <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, it should be a it should be a doorstop. Well, or the, the or the one that consistently breaks their headset. One of the facilities I worked at, I accidentally put them on the stage and ran a lift over them. I don't know how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> no more CC subject. Yeah, darn. That's when they end up in the props department. <laughs> What's the price difference between that and the, and the 26? Do you know? Not much. So I think retail price on the 110 is like 219, and the others are right at 200. So not a lot. So I still have some like television station control room that want the lightest weight thing possible. Okay. Are you on? How long are you on headset? Uh, it's hours at a time, but I would have done over durability wise. Okay. Yeah, I probably would have done because the 26. I mean, it's super comfortable. I like it a lot. I've yep. used it forever. I have a 27 too, the behind the head one. Right. But um, I, durability wise, I think that would have lasted longer. Yeah. With the replaceable cable, is it up to these, okay. or is it just the plug? Uh. I have a version of this with the Euroden connector, or as we all know that to be an S video connector. Anybody else know this hasn't gone this up? Oh, sorry. It started there. <laughs> we may have two. Here's another one. There you go. Anybody else? Just for you. Just for you. You didn't grab it. He's a nice guy. <laughs> I feel like anything I buy, I want to take to my school and like slam in a door and then be like, it still works. Great. Still works. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Test, test, test. The other thing is with the DX200 and 400 systems, there is an all in one headset. Yeah, I didn't bring one. So you've been to you've been one to Starbucks? My, one of my schools has the, I think D Anza yeah, or El Cerrito has those. Yep. And the biggest question we get on those is, oh my God, are these going to be durable? Right. Um, HME started in the fast food industry, and mm -hmm. that's who they hand them to, teenagers. Yeah. Bonk, bonk, bonk. Yep. The only thing in that, a restaurant. yeah, the only thing that'll pose problems if you drop it in the fryer. Yeah, we don't but have one of those. But luckily, so you don't have one of those. That's a little bit too direct. Now, you will be made fun of the first couple of weeks. You know, would you like fries with that and all that goes along with it? But if you're up in the catwalk, hanging lighting instruments, it's just nice not to have a piece of cable dangling. Uh, Snag it on things. The only complaint I've ever had about one of those was uh, at a high school where they have a guy sitting in the orchestra pit with the orchestra on headset and it didn't go loud enough when the orchestra was playing. Right. Well, yeah. So, double ear headset, yes. Yeah. Adapter. You can adapt in any headset into the melt packs. Yeah. So. so, some of you may have your own personal Telex PH88. It's fine. Basically, all of this series will work on just about anybody's headset. There are some versions of this headset, the HME headset, that won't work on the ClearCom stuff, aren't there? Yeah. 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 Well, it will. It's just you have to go into the belt pack. Yeah. Adjust yeah. So the HME headset I mentioned briefly is an electric mic element, which means it needs voltage for the mic element to work. All of these packs provide that voltage. The new belt pack provides voltage. Our base stations do not. So if you t had one of those and plugged it in, you can hear, but you can't speak. So overall, yay or nay on the, who, who says yay for the CC110? Who says nay? No opinion. So we have yays and no opinion. Well, I love that. Fair enough.